In the previous lesson, we said that the fundamental component must be independent. Let's consider this case to further understand about this linear independence topic. Any vectors along the line beta here is a vector space can be composed from the fundamental component which is the v with a vector of 1, 1. So you can get u which is a twice the length of v just by multiplying it with a 2 and maybe the opposite of the v by multiplying it with a negative 1 and an s negative 2 and even you can multiply with a 3.5 or even any other scalars here to get a new members here. So we say that any vectors along the line beta can be composed from the v, the 1, 1 vectors here. Hence, we say that the v is the fundamental component which spans the beta vector space. Or in another case, where you have a two-dimensional space here and you have two fundamental components, let's assume that the v and w are two fundamental components of this two-dimensional space. And you can use different combinations of vector addition and scalar multiplications to get any other vectors on this two-dimensional space. For example, for s, you can get s from the combinations of three portions of v and negative two portions of w, as well as you can get the new vectors of t just by combining negative v and four portions of w. Hence, we say that the v and w are the fundamental components that span the R2 vector space here. But how do you know, how do you decide whether the components given are the fundamental components or not? In this context, we will call the fundamental components as bases or basis for singular component. So in order to know whether the given components are the basis for a system or not, we have to conduct the linear independence check. For any given components to be bases, they must be independent from each other, which means that you can't express it in another components. So think about the concrete case. Can you get the water from the combinations of gravel, sand, and cement, or vice versa, any components here from the combinations of the other three components? You can't get it right, which means that the components are independent. You can't express water equals to gravel plus sand plus cement and there is no connections between the components. For example, let's look at this example. You have been given three vectors here, v1, v2, and v3. And we want to know whether these three vectors are linearly independent or not. So if they are linearly independent, this equation will be valid. We multiply k1 with v1, k2 with k k v2 and k3 with v3 should give you a zero vector here. And since the v here, the v1, v2, v3 here are not zero, which means that the k1, k2, k3 must all be zero in order for this equation to be valid. Because the only solution to get the only solution to get a zero vector here is for the value of k1, k2, k3 equals to zero. So if you recall from your chapter 1 lessons, you will know that this is known as a trivial solution where the unknowns k1, k2, k3 are all equals to 0. If you manage to solve the system of linear equations and then you get this final answer which proves that the vectors v1, v2, v3, they are linearly independent. If you get any other solutions other than the trivial solutions or we call it the non-trivial solutions which means that the k1, k2, k3 are not all equal to zeros which means that those v1, v2, v3 they are depending on each other and thus they are not the fundamental or the basis for the system. So let's consider this case from the previous example here. You put it into the corresponding equations and you put it into the augmented matrix form and because on the right hand side is a zero vector so definitely they will have a zero zero here and you want to prove that the system has trivial solutions which means that when you reduce it to the row action form you should get something like this where the k1 corresponding to zero k2 corresponding to zero and k3 corresponding to zero or in another word the system of linear equation has a solution so if you has a trivial solutions which means that our assumptions where the summation of the k and the v equals to zero is valid. 
So we has a one we have a one solution for this system of linear equations. But if you have a non-trivial solutions, you fail to uphold our assumptions, which means that the summation of k1 v1 equals to zero. Either you have no solution for the value of k, or you have infinitely many solutions. So you can check either you solve it into the reduced row action form, or remember from the equivalent statement, you can use the determinant to check it. If your determinant is zero, which means that this assumption is not valid, the assumption that the summation, the assumption that the summation of k1 v1 and k2 v2 and k3 v3 equals to zero is not valid. So the k1, k2, k3, they are not equal to zero. So it means it means that the k value must be any other values other than zero, and hence you have non-trivial solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions, and those given vectors v1, v2, v3 are not linearly independent. So let's try with the first exercise here. v1, v2, and v3 is given, and follow the same step. You're going to substitute everything into this assumption equation here, and you put them into the corresponding matching with the corresponding components to end up with a system of linear equations. You put them into the augmented metric forms and you can use the determinant method to check whether your assumption where the summation of k1, v1, k2, v2, k3, v3, if you have more than that, k4, v4 equals to 0 or not. So I left it as an exercise for you to try it out. And the second exercise is that you can use the linear independence to check for the polynomials as well. So let's imagine you have a polynomial of 1x x squared until x raised to the power of a certain power from a linear independent set in P1. So let's consider the P0 as 1, P1 as x raised to the power of 1, a P2 equals to x squared, and so on. You have to show that the multiplications of these components with a scalars and then you sum it out it should give you a zero vector and you have to prove that you have only the trivial solutions for those p0 p1 p2 and pn to be linearly independent but in case you get a non-trivial solutions it means that some of these equations are redundant and can be expressed in another components so the questions given is let's say you have a p1 p2 and p3 here and I want you to check whether they are linearly dependent or independent. So to wrap up with these lessons, in order for the components to be a basis, it must fulfill two criteria. Either it span the vector space or they are linearly independent. So both of these criteria must be fulfilled before we can call the given vectors the basis for the system. Span and linearly independent.